Happy Thank Father's you, Day. God bless you. Yes. How are you doing? I am blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have I have a praise report to give, but do you want me to wait until after? Let's hear that praise report now. I mean, always we can we can hear it now. We can hear it later too. Let's hear it. Okay. Um, in 2015, I received a a major and miraculous healing from the Lord, and um, before I was healed, I was legally blind. And after the Lord healed me, I didn't wear glasses for four years, and I could see fine. And then I went to um, an eye doctor for the first time in four years after my healing, and I found out I had received even further healing that I didn't even know. I used to have cataracts, and both cataracts in my eyes are completely gone. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Both cataracts are completely gone. Yes. Praise God. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. We just give God the glory and honor. Yes. Praise God. Tell us some more, Jeep. Well, I'm just praising God. I, I, I just stand in awe, you know, that he's amazing, amazing. I didn't even know how, how much of a healing I received, but really it's a full and whole, complete healing. When God does it, he does it, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And he leaves nothing untouched. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. Praise yes. God. Praise, we're talking about Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to God, our Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got a mighty yes. man. Yes, Hallelujah. yes. Praise God. Praise God. Well, thank you, Jeep. By the way, Jeep, how come, why did we call you Jeep? Is that the vehicle you drive? Um. Before I was healed and um, before I had come into a relationship with the Lord, I had a Jeep that I was just, I loved. I loved my Jeep. And and everybody just, I had a tag that said Jeep and it just kind of stuck with me. Then after, um, then I got rid of the Jeep because it was too hard for me to drive and get in and out because of the condition that I was in. And then um, after the Lord healed me, I just kept the name Jeep. But I do want to change it to a more godly name. That's a godly name. Jeep is a godly name. Hey, hey, hey. Boo Boo is a godly name. <laughs> Lil Bra is a godly name. Uh, Sis is a godly name. If you're a godly person, hey, look here. Hey, Jeep, I've been called some names in my lifetime now, and them, many of them were not godly. Well, I praise God. They call me Pastor. They call me Leroy. I mean, they call me Dr. Carter. I mean, and some still have some names for me, but I prefer what they call me. Jeep is a godly name. We love you, Jeep, and thank God for you. I love you, too. Hey, if you're ever on the East Coast, Jeep, I want you to meet Dr. Jean Bratton. She's, she'll be greeting us in a few moments. Uh, if you're ever on the East Coast, Jeep, I want you to meet this Pastor, Dr. Jean Bratton. And I hope that if Gene's ever out in Colorado, you two can hook up. You can take you can take Colorado for Jesus, uh, or you can take Wilmington, Delaware for Jesus, working together. Praise God! So we, we'll call Gene on in a moment to greet us. <clears throat> let's let's have uh, Dustina come on and say hello to us. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Happy Father's Day. We're doing good here. I've got my other daughter. She'll be here today. Well, I adopted her. <laughs> she's, my, she's my daughter's friend. She's there with, her, with you for the whole summer, summer right? right? Yes, sir, she is. Mm-hmm. Yep, and hopefully if we're able to, we're going to be taking her to the revivals in North Carolina and Virginia as well. So Hallelujah, hallelujah. Or praising and hoping that will work out for you. It will be good for all of us. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now, Jeep, I did not send you an email as I, I said I would this week, but uh, we're, we're asking you to preach the word here on June 14th. I'm sorry. Ju- did I say June? July. July yeah, 14th, I know what you meant. July 14th. Will you accept that, Jeep? Will you accept that assignment? <laughs> Are you talking to me or Jeep girl? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Jeep Jeep is next in line. Uh, oh, okay. Dustina, will you accept that assignment, Dustina? 
Uh, I don't know. When's your parents going to see that? Oh, check it. You, check you it might, out. Yeah, let me check my schedule because her parents are supposed to be coming up that week for my birthday, and I don't know what's going on, and that's like a big family, big cr big okay. crowd. But okay. It, it wouldn't hurt for them to hear it either, but... <laughs> If you so. can't handle that this time, we'll get you in August, okay? we get you in August. Okay, I'll let you know as soon as possible. If, if you can't handle it, then we'll bring Jeep on. i ask Jeep to do that on uh, J July 14. Okay, Jeep, can you do that? Jeep goes out preaching in the, in the Loveland, Colorado area. Jeep, we'll talk uh -huh. about that in case... Uh, Dustina can't do this. Okay. Okay. Sounds got, good. Uh, well, God bless y'all. Right. Okay. Say hello to Nathan and all the family. Uh, Nathan, I'll be uh, good. And, uh, and that sweet little girl who's doing all that singing, Destiny. Yes. Yes. Well, Shelby can sing pretty good, too. They've been singing the whole time she's been here, so. She's got a beautiful okay. voice. Okay. Yes, I sure do. Take them all with you, though, in North Carolina. Win souls for the Lord. Amen. Ryan Trogler, Marysville, Pennsylvania. Come on and say hello to us, Ryan. Good morning, Parish. Good morning, Church, and happy Father's Day to you, sir. Happy Father's Day, Ryan. God bless you. Oh, God bless you, too, sir. God bless you, too. It's a wonderful day in the Lord, and I also want to wish Jesus Christ, our, our Heavenly Father, a happy Father's Day as well. Yes, praise God, praise God, praise God. Now is your precious wife, Tara, nearby? Uh, no, she, uh, no, she's not. Okay, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. She's not there, but we're going to stretch out her, our hands to Tara Trogler. Right now, everybody, I want you to stretch out your hands to Tara Trogler. We're going to obey the Lord. We're going to command healing for her eyes, Ryan. Amen. Will you stand Amen. in the gap with me, Ryan, in agreement? Yes, I am. Yes, and I will. God, praise. Let's stretch out our hands to Tara Trugler. In the name of Jesus, we stretch out our hands to, to you, Tara, that you be healed. Father God, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. You said for us to, to do this. And, Father, we command healing for her. Touch her eyes. Lay your hands on her eyes, Lord God, and heal her. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, wherever she is, God, we thank you for that healing. And we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to get an excellent Amen. report very, very soon, Ryan. Praise God. So, Ryan, oh, yeah, you yeah. just hold off for a moment. In a moment, we're going to ask you to come back and, and pray for us uh, as we get ready for this message, okay? Yeah, I'll be waiting. Okay, praise God. I want to introduce everybody to, um, before I do this, 859250. Who is this? Uh, this is Jackie Fisher, uh, Jackie Pastor Fisher. Carter. Jackie Fisher. Jackie Fisher. Happy, Are happy you Father. In North Carolina? Uh, Are you in Pisgah? Yes, I'm calling from the mountains of Pisgah oh, in North Lord. Carolina. Praise God. I finally I'm got through. I'm on Russell's, thank you, hallelujah, I'm on Russell's uh, iPhone, okay. so I finally was able to figure out how to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pr praise the Lord. Hey, yes. Jackie, do you praise have your Lord. Bible nearby? <clears throat> yes, I have it in front of me, sir. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to read to us from the mountains of North Carolina, western North Carolina, the Pisgah Mountains, right on the Tennessee North Carolina border, I'm going to ask you to read for us Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Okay? Okay, In amen. Moment, we're going to ask you to do that. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Jean Bratton, Dr. Jean Bratton from Wilmington, Delaware. Come on and say hello to us, Dr. Hello. Jean Bratton. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hello, church. How's everyone this morning? We are blessed. Hi, Pastor Jean. Hi, Pastor Carter and everyone on. on oh, that sounds church. like Sister Loretta. Hey, Sister Loretta. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. The Living Waters Ministries in Living Water Ministries in 
Wilmington, Delaware. Greet everyone, Dr. Jean, and, 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 and share what the Lord is doing in your life. Hello, everyone. We're located in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, we're just preaching the word and believing God and trying to evangelize lost souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, go back with Pastor Carter for more than, it's like 30 years. Am I right, Pastor Carter? You are right. You're right. Yeah. Um, I said under him, great man of God, awesome teacher. As a matter of fact, he changed my whole perspective um one thing i i will always remember um about pastor carter something he once said he told us the devil is a punk and he introduced us to spiritual warfare so if you want to be a mighty man or woman of god and learn how to fight spiritually stay connected with pastor carter amen amen, amen. praise god amen. dr jean praise god dr jean and Dr. Jean, we're going to be up there the first, second Sunday in August, and um, we're going to ordain Sister Loretta Jackson, who's on with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Amen. We're going to ordain uh, Loretta Jackson, Jackson to the gospel ministry. Loretta, come on and say hello to us. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Everyone's fine. We're fine. Great. Okay. God bless We're, all of all my brothers and sisters in Christ Thank Jesus. you. Thank you, Loretta. By the way, everybody, Dr. Jean is a member of our board of directors for Back to Basics Ministries yes. and the Back to Basics School of Ministry. Ministry. Uh, we're so grateful for her and just want to announce, um, and I put the website on top of the chat window, uh, visit that website, www.backtobasicsministriesincorporated.com, to see the things we're doing. <clears throat> God is using this ministry to do worldwide. Last year, we sent $5,000 to Kenya so that Bishop Elijah and the people can buy property to build a church on. So they were able to purchase two acres of land for $5,000. Wow. This year, uh, we were trying to raise, uh, I think, $10,000, $15,000 to build two buildings. And the Lord says, scale it down. And so we're, we're building, going to build one building. We ask uh, 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 Pastor Elijah, Bishop Elijah, we ordained him as a bishop when we were there about six years ago. And uh, he operates Back to Basics Ministries in Kenya and East Africa, a true man of God, a very honest man of God and who has a heart for evangelism. <clears throat> and I asked him, well, how much of, of a building can we build for $3,500? He said, well, we can build a 60 by 30 building. And I'm looking at my basement. <clears throat> our, our basement is about 60 by 30, uh, 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 1,800 square feet. So he said, we can do this. I said, can you put a room in there, quarters for yourself. He said, yeah, we can put a second floor on there, build it above the church. So they're going to build. He said, we can do it for $3,500. Wow. Bless God, wow. Dr. Jean, Terry, yes. uh, Jackie, yes. Christina, and, 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 and you all have helped with this. Loretta, you helped with this. Stacy, you've helped with this. We sent them, we wired to them, our bank wired to them this week $3,500 they received wow. it on Thursday, and now they can build the church, and Pastor Elijah can have a place to live. He's been renting Thank these you. places in, in Kenya, and, I mean, you got to go down this hillside and through the rocks and uh, climb through barbed oh, wire yeah. to get to the place he's been oh, renting, and um, it's so been, been so beat up. And now he's got, he can have his own quarters in a building in western Kenya where there's no church and the people are just hungry. They've been worshiping under the trees and sitting on the ground. And, 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 and now God is going to build a building and people are going to be coming from far and wide throughout Kenya to come to that anointed place where they can come, they can get food, they can get water, they can get supplies, and they can worship God. And then we're going to have Dr. Jane. 
It's going to be a training center for pastors and preachers and teachers. And I was just so blessed. I'm just sharing this, ladies and gentlemen, because, Aww. hey, Jackie Fisher, I'm, a, I'm, I'm exuberant about what the Lord is doing this week. Amen. <laughs> I called. I called. No, he called me. Bishop Elijah's brother, Jacko, who is a pastor in, in Mombasa and who operates a, a school for, uh, for high, a high school, he called me, uh, made a, a call via uh, Facebook, and we talked, and I said, uh, uh, Jacko, the Lord put me on your heart. Would you be our dean of the school of ministry in East Africa? He said, oh, I've been waiting for something like this. Hallelujah. Oh Man. He's, studying, he's studying in a doctoral program in a seminary in Nairobi. But he says, he says now I'd like to finish up in your school. <laughs> wow. And I asked him, I said, would you become our dean for East Africa, recruit students, and train them, and 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 and." And, and teach them the word of God, teach the pastors. He said, I've been waiting. He said, you don't know how I've been waiting for an opportunity, opportunity like this. So, ladies and gentlemen, your labor is not in vain. Your love is not in vain. Your giving is not in vain. Your tithes are not in vain. And we don't ask for money except for every now and then we have something like the building program. So you were, you were instrumental in helping to provide the money to build the church in Kenya the Kenyans are excited. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if, if you've been worshiping under the trees and you're out there in the rain and the wind and, and, and now you're going to have a building, I mean, there's joy. They're shouting for joy in Kenya. And I'm shouting for joy here in Lithonia, Georgia, because of what God is doing and what God has touched his people to do. So do not grow weary in well-doing. Your labor is not in vain. And as we work together, Dr. Gene Bratton and Terry and, and Ryan and Tara and Stacy and Dusty and, uh, and so many others, as we work together, Loretta, as a team, you might think your labor is in vain. No, it is not in vain. And so last night, Jackie and I were talking, and we said, okay, after we build a church, as we build a church, then let's, let's build, let's get a well, dig a well there. Let's raise the money to dig a well there. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this vision. And, and, and God amen. spoke through Jackie. Yes, said, amen. Let's build a well so that they will have water and then people from yes. the countryside can come there and get water from the well. That's a blessing yeah. from the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, where people can get free water. They don't have to pay for it. They can come and get the water, and they, and they can, what a witness, we, and to say, God has given you a church where you can come and worship. Now God is giving you water so that you can have water. So we're excited. We're excited. All of this in this little ministry, this little ministry, it's a little online church. But it's a big ministry because you are a part of this. So praise God. Hey, Christy Carpenter, come on and say hello to us from way up there in 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 uh, uh, Idaho. Christy, are you there? I see you're just coming online. So Christy will be on with us a little later. Okay, here's what oh, we're going to do. Mr. Carter? Hey, Christy. God bless you. Hi. I'm on the phone. I had to figure out how to unmute it. Okay. God bless you. Talk to us. Well, that is absolutely awesome, wonderful news that you just shared with all of us. And it's so encouraging to know that our work is not in vain. And hallelujah. Give God the praise and all the glory. What a mighty, mighty, wonderful God we have. Praise God. Praise God. And we greet you and wish all your precious hubby, Aaron, a happy Father's Day from us. Will you please? I will. Jesus, thank you. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Praise God. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Jackie Fisher. We're going to ask Ryan Trogler to lead us in prayer. Then after Ryan comes and leads us in prayer, 
from the top of the mountain in the, on the border of Tennessee and and North Carolina. Jackie Fish is going to read from Luke chapter eighteen, Luke chapter sixteen, verses nineteen through thirty-one, and then I'm going to share a message. Uh, I'm going to share a message, and the message it will be entitled. Is there a hell? Now, you know there is, but stay on anyhow. Is there a hell? Ryan, lead us in prayer, and Jackie, please read the scripture. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to uh, want you to bless all the fathers out there today for Father's Day, and we also want to bless you for being our Heavenly Father. Lord, we want you to come down and heal the sick, uh, heal the blind, let them see your miracles, and Lord, heal the deaf so they can hear your word as well. Lord, we just want you to come into our lives and fulfill us, fulfill, fulfill us up with everything that you have, Lord, and just guide us where you need us to be. And we just want to you know, bless all the brothers and sister Christians out there who are spreading your word. And Lord, we just want to say we thank you, we love you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Jackie, are you ready? Did we lose Jackie Fisher? Well, Okay, then um, let's hear the word of God. Luke chapter 16, verses 1931. Jackie will probably get back on. Okay. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. I mean, this guy was living it up. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And I think about this scripture, I think about the many, the thousands of people trying to get to the border of the United States just to get some crumbs, but I'm not going to go there right now. That's not today's message. And it came to pass, verse 22, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, listen to this, and in hell, the rich man, he lift up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Verse 23 says, and in hell, this is Jesus speaking. In your Bible, this is red letter uh, stuff in your Bible. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus said, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. He called Abraham father. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they come also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Verse 30, And he said, Nay, father, Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, 
neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Oh, so sad, so sad, so sad, ladies and gentlemen, so sad. My subject today is, is there a hell? Is there a hell? Ladies and gentlemen, it hurt my heart to read. Uh, I read it last week and I read it again this week where they have the Pope. The Pope said there is no hell. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pope said there is no hell. Now the Pope is supposed to be the father of all the Catholics. We're talking about millions of people, ladies and gentlemen, in this nation, millions of people in the nations, and the Pope is supposed to be their father. In fact, the Catholics think he is God here on earth, and, and God here on earth saying there is no hell. Ladies and gentlemen, and, 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 and I got Catholics, they would hate my guts for preaching this message today, but I'm going to preach it anyway because I just don't care. But, but if you're a Catholic and if you're not saved, you need to get saved. And, 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 and actually, you need to come out from among them. The Bible says come out from among them. Get away from that idolatry and, 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 and get saved. And just say, ladies and gentlemen, you can finger beads and count beads and pray the rosary and, and, and say Hail Marys and, and do penance and all and still wind up in hell. The Pope, the leader of the Catholic Church, says there is no hell. But I beg to differ, hallelujah. I beg to differ, and I beg to differ in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, who himself said, Jesus said, ladies and gentlemen, in verse 23 of Luke 16, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Jesus says there is a hell and it's a place of torment. Ladies and gentlemen, Luke 16, 23, you need to read it for yourself. We're going to examine this place that the Bible calls hell. We'll look at the evidence for a place called hell. Don't take what you're going to hear lightly, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take it for granted. If what you hear, for, hear is true, you could be in serious danger. If you're listening today, and we've got people listening all over the world via my YouTube channel, via the website, every message that we preach is now on our website, in two spots on the website, under the online church page and on the, on the home page. These messages are on the website, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. We've got people all over the world, worldwide, listening to this message. And, and, and God is expanding the ministry, enlarging the ministry, enlarging our contacts, Dr. Gene Bratton, so that we can reach the world. A Jeep, so that we can reach the world, and you are part of this ministry. It's not my ministry. This is the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he wants to use us. He wants to use us. Praise God. He wants to use us in Kenya. He wants to use us in, in, in China. He wants to use us in, in Russia. He wants to use us in the nations, and he wants to use us here in the United States of America the United States of America, where there are so many people fighting against Jesus, where this unbelief is so thick, you can cut it with a knife. But God is preaching his word. He is preaching his word. He wants people to be saved, ladies and gentlemen. Several years ago, a man by the name of Dr. Maurice Rawlings published a book called Beyond Death's Door. And Dr. Rawlings he was a devout atheist, and he said uh, he considered all religion hocus-pocus. He said death is nothing more than a painless extinction. But something happened in 1977 that brought a dramatic change in Dr. Rawlings' life. And he was resuscitating a man, bringing a man back to life, giving him resuscitation. And the man was terrified and screaming. Now, Dr. Jean Bratton is a nurse. She's got a Ph.D., ladies and gentlemen. She's got a Ph.D. She's a nurse. She's on with us. And this man was reviving. Uh, this doctor was reviving a man. And the man was terrified and screaming, descending down into the flames of hell, the man was saying. Each time he regained a heartbeat and respiration, Doc, Dr. Rawlings said, the patient screamed, 
I am in hell. He was terrified and pleaded with me to help him. Uh, the doctor said, I was scared to death. Then I noticed a genuinely alarmed look on his face. He had a terrified look, worse than the expression seen in death. Now, this doctor had seen many dead people. He said the terrified look on this man's face was worse than anything he had ever seen in 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 his his practice. I want to welcome uh, David Carter from the nation of Dubai on with us. And then he said this patient had a grotesque grimace expressing sheer horror. He looked as if his pupils were dilated and he was perspiring and trembling. He looked as if his hair was on end. Then another strange thing happened. The man said, don't you understand? He screamed out to the doctor. Don't you understand? I am in hell. Don't let me go back to hell. Now, this doctor's trying to resuscitate this man who had died, and, and he kept getting a heartbeat, and he kept losing a heartbeat, trying to resuscitate the man, and the man was screaming, don't you understand? I am in hell. Don't let me go back in hell. The man was serious, and it finally occurred to me, the doctor said, that he was indeed in trouble. He was in a panic like I had never seen before. This was by, written by Dr. Maurice Rawlings. It's a book called Beyond Death's Door. You can get this book. Uh, Thomas Nelson published it in 1979. Dr. Rawlings said no one who, have, who could have heard his screams and saw the look of terror on his face could doubt for a single minute that he was actually in a place called hell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pope, the father of a lot of people, millions of people, the spiritual father in this world, in America, in nations, the Pope said there is no hell. What kind of happy Father's Day is that when you have a father who is in error, who is ignorant of the things of God, a, a person who's supposed to be God's representative here on earth preaching, preaching uh, uh, abomination and preaching blasphemy and, and preaching these things. And the sad thing, ladies and gentlemen, is this. There are Catholics. They will remain Catholic. I'm a good Catholic. I was born in Catholic. They're going to make the sign of the cross. They're going to do penance. They're going to finger their beads. And they will hate on you for preaching the truth. But ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, God gives us a choice. The Pope says there is no hell. And so a lot of people are going to believe there's no hell. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got the facts before us. And if you don't believe this, read Luke chapter 16, 23, where Jesus, the son of the living God, who is very God, said, and in hell. The man was in hell. Jesus said the man was in hell. Now, now the Pope's making Jesus look like a liar. But Jesus is not a liar. God is not a liar. His word will not return unto him void. It's time to wake up, folks. Wake up, folks. Wake up, church. There are a lot of people in the church who don't believe in a hell. They believe they can live any way they want to. And there are a lot of stupid people in this world. They say we're already in hell. There are a lot of people saying we're already in hell. Oh, no, no, I'll contrary. I beg to contend with you. I beg to differ with you. There is a hell, and it's a place that you need to avoid. Jesus teaches us in Luke 16 that the rich man who lived scrumptiously, he lived large, high on the hog all his life, and he died. And the beggar that he refused to even give a crumb of bread to uh, was in hell. So hell has compartments. Jackie Fisher, hell has, had, had, let's change that. Hell had two compartments. One, a place called paradise where the righteous went, and then a place... Uh, called Gehenna, where the 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 doomed uh, were doomed for for torment for all eternity, and hell had two compartments until Jesus died on the cross and he led captivity captive. He closed down paradise in hell, and and all who were in paradise, the righteous dead, went with Jesus up into heaven where they surround the throne of God, waiting for their glorified bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus went into hell, took the keys to the kingdom that, that Satan had stolen from Adam, 
and then Jesus closed down paradise and, 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 and moved paradise from the underground up into heaven. Praise God. So read Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. The Bible continues to warn of a place called hell. There are over 162 references in the New Testament alone which warn of hell. Seventy of these references were spoken by Jesus, by Jesus. In Luke 16, 24, the rich man says, I am tormented in this flame. I'm tormented in this flame. Revelation 20, 15 says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hey, Pope, wake up. Wake up, Pope. Teach the people right. Teach them correct. First of all, get saved, Pope. Get saved. Give your life to Jesus Christ and get saved. And then preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Millions of people are perishing because of the ignorance of a lot of so-called spiritual leaders uh, uh, following these so-called prophets. Uh, millions of Muslims are dying. Millions of Sikhs. Millions of Hindus. Millions of atheists. Millions uh, who follow these false religions and, and, and worship these false leaders who, who do not honor Jesus Christ, who do not honor the gospel. Folks, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's a wake-up call for the church. It's a wake-up call for the world because Jesus is coming back soon. The Bible gives us the location of hell. When Jesus died on the cross, he descended into hell. In Acts chapter 2, Peter says in verse 31, Seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Jesus went into hell. He went into the inner core of the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Hell is in the inner core of the earth. When Jesus died, his soul went into hell. His body stayed in the Joseph's tomb, but Jesus' soul in the spirit, he went into hell. Jesus himself said he would do this. In Matthew 12, 40, Jesus said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the Bible makes it clear. Hell is inside the earth. There is a hell, Pope. There is a hell, people. Ephesians 4, 9 says of Jesus, now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. So there is a hell. It's in the lower parts of the earth. Scientists have, have uh, done a lot of investigation and, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people depend on what science has to say. Well, science does not supersede the word of God, but we thank God for our, science, our scientists. The scientists say the great pit or, or hell would only need to be 100 miles or less in diameter to contain, with much room to spare, all of the 40 billion or so people who have ever lived. They estimate that... Over 40 billion people have lived on the earth. And if all of them went to hell, it would take about 100 square miles in diameter in the core of the earth. And the scientist says, yes, there's plenty of room plus room to spare. Scientists also say that the earth's inner core, the center of the earth, has a temperature of over 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit, over 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Have you seen pictures of a volcano erupting, spewing a lake of fire from inside the earth? That fire is coming from the inside of the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Volcanoes consume everything within miles just from the heat. Remember Mount St. Helens, May 18, 1980? It was described by reporters Yep. who said, when hell surfaced upon the earth, when hell surfaced upon the earth, hell surfaced upon the earth when Mount St. Helens erupted. So the Bible describes a place called hell. It is real. Do not gloss over this, ladies and gentlemen. 
do not believe some of these so-called leaders who say there is no hell and there are religions, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about millions of people who do not believe in a hell. And, and they think that once, once your life is over, that's it. But that is not it. Luke chapter 16 lets us know the rich man, he's crying out right now. He said, he said uh, to Lazarus, who was on the other side of a gulf, a great divide, uh, 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 Lazarus could not get to him, and he could not get across to Lazarus. Oh, please bring me some water. Tip your finger in some water and, and tip it on my tongue. I'm, I'm in torment in these flames. The rich man, Jesus described the rich man as being engulfed by flames, burning but not being burned up, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine, imagine. Now wake up, people, wake up. The moment a person arrives in hell, he, start, he or she starts burning and will burn and burn and will have a body. They will have a body, an eternal body that will not burn up. It will be in torment. It will feel every flame, and they will be screaming and crying, gnashing of teeth, pulling of hair. Hell is not the place to be. This doctor described the man he was trying to revive. The man was saying, please revive me, resuscitate me, bring me back to life. I'm in hell. And every time the man would lose a heartbeat, his, the flames would lick him. And he's, every time he'd come back to consciousness, I'm in hell, revive me, resuscitate me. And then we have this rich man in hell. Please, Father Abraham, please, please. Uh, let Lazarus bring me some water. Abraham said, no, no, Lazarus can't get there to you, and you can't get across the gulf to him. Well, please, if, if since I know I'm going to be here for all eternity, and these flames are tearing me up, they're eating me up, he said, and I can't get out of this, I'll never escape this torment. Please, I've got five brothers. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. I've got five brothers and sisters. I've got five brothers Send somebody to my father's house and tell them to avoid this place. Tell them to avoid this place. <clears throat> Send somebody to my father's house. And Abraham said, no, no, let them hear the gospel. This is Jesus preaching through Luke chapter 16. No, let them hear the gospel. They've got Moses and they've got the prophets. Let them hear them. And the rich man says, you know they're not going to listen to them. And, and Jesus says, no, no. Even if one rose from the dead, they still will not believe. And Jesus is talking experientially, ladies and gentlemen. He's talking prophetically in this, uh, in this parable. He says, even if one were to raise himself from the dead, people will still not believe, and that's the situation. We see Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, going into hell and, and taking back the keys to the kingdom of God. We see Jesus uh, purchasing redemption for all mankind, yet, yet there are millions who resist him. There are leaders who resist him. There are leaders in this nation who resist Jesus. There are leaders in the church who resist Jesus. There are churches where they do not preach Jesus Christ. There are churches they do not believe in the Holy Ghost. There are churches do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There are churches that do not believe in salvation. There are people worldwide who are dying because they don't hear the gospel. And there are people who don't preach the gospel. And Jesus even said, they some will not even believe. Even if one were to raise himself from the dead and preach to them. Ladies and gentlemen, believe Jesus. Believe the word of God. I've got more material. We're going to have to come back next week with part two. Is there a hell? Is there a hell? Part two next week. We're going to uh, bring it to a close here. But ladies and gentlemen, there is a place called hell. And you and I need to avoid this. And you and I need to make sure that uh, our loved ones avoid this place. <clears throat> even our enemies, ladies and gentlemen, even our enemies, our worst enemy. You don't even want your worst enemy to go to hell. You don't want to command anybody to go to hell. It's a sad thing. Don't ever say to somebody, go to hell. 
No, 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 no. You don't want that. Preach the gospel. Share the good news. Jesus died on the cross so that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. Jesus won the victory over hell and over the grave. Hell could not contain him. He brought the righteous dead out of hell and left the condemned ones, those who denied God, those who hated God. He left them in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, people are dying. Let me give you some a, a, a few figures, just a few figures here. I had a reference here about the people who are dying and how quickly they're dying. A uh, uh, certain number of people die every second. We'll get to that next week. We'll get to that part next week. They die. A uh, certain number of people die every second, every minute. Thousands are dying. And, 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 and uh, I have a timeline that I read about um, the number of people dying every week, every month, every year every five years, and most of these people are dying without Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to leave this earth without Jesus. You don't want to leave this world without Jesus. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Revelation, the book of Revelation says, and all whose name, names were not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, hell is hot. Hell is in the core of the earth. But the scriptures tell us in Revelation that hell will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire will be hotter, seven times hotter than hell. Ladies and gentlemen, hell right now has millions of people, billions of people in the core of the earth screaming, 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 screaming for mercy. And there were some uh, scientists who were drilling a hole in the earth in, in one of the Scandinavian countries. And, and they uh, drilled a deep hole into the earth. And they put a microphone uh, at the end of their drill. And they were astonished. They were astounded, ladies and gentlemen, at the sounds of screaming of a large number of people. Screams, screams of agony as people were crying out for deliverance and salvation. They were screaming from the pits of hell. Ladies and gentlemen, this is real. It's real. It's a place you want to avoid. You don't want to go there, and you don't want your worst enemy to go there. I want to give a message, a shout-out to you fathers. It's Father's Day. Father, the best thing you can do for your child is to teach your child about Jesus Christ and lead your children to the Lord. I'm so blessed that uh, I was able, uh, along with my wife, to lead our children to the Lord. Stacy's a witness, and she shared that today. And, and, and I pray that you'll take the time out, fathers. And mothers, if you're a single mother or, or, or you're the one who influences that child, make sure your child is saved. Husband, make sure your wife is saved. Wife, make sure your husband is saved. Pray for one another. Then pray for your neighbors. Let this gospel go forth, starting in our house, and then our neighbors. Praise God. Praise God. And, and, and when God sends you on a search, on a sign like he send, he's sending Dustina into North Carolina to preach, preach, preach. Preach the word, Dustina. Preach the word. Don't get caught up in worldliness. Don't get caught up in the perks. So many preachers get caught up in the perks and the liberties, you know, the, the, the free meals, the, 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 the rental cars and the hotel rooms, and, and, and Satan has a way of throwing a preacher off course. But you preach the gospel, Dustina. You preach the gospel, Jeep. You preach the gospel, Gene Bratton. You preach the gospel, Ryan. Preach the gospel wherever you are. Preach the gospel, David in Dubai. Preach the gospel, Elijah, in Kenya. All my friends in Kenya, in Uganda, and, 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 and nations in Africa who are listening to this message. All of my friends in, uh, throughout the world, Annika in Switzerland. All of my friends in the nations, preach the gospel. Preach what thus saith the Lord. Don't preach somebody's opinion. Preach what thus saith the Lord. We're going to bring it. 
to an end today, but I will take up next week where we lost part two of Is There a Hell? Is There a Hell? Tell your friends to tune in with us next week, 11 o'clock Eastern time for part two of Is There a Hell? And they can get this message on YouTube or on my website. Praise God. We need to hear the word of God. We need to stay in the presence of the, of the Lord. Let us continue to humble ourselves before the Lord God Almighty. Let us continue to humble ourselves before him and believe God. Believe God. Do not dishonor God by living any old way. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not want us to go to hell. He did not make hell for us. He made hell for Satan and his demons. God created hell for Satan and his demons, and Satan and the demons will wind up in hell. So don't let the devil deceive you. He wants to take you there with him. He knows he's going down. Hey, Gene Bratton, Satan knows he's going down, and he wants to take Amen. people with him. But Satan is a liar. The devil is a liar. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pope said there is no hell. But we just blew the Pope out of the water today, didn't we? Hallelujah. We just Amen. blew him out of the water. Now you got to pray for the Pope. Pray for him. Don't chastise him. Pray for him. Pray that he gets saved. Pray that the Catholics get saved. Pray that the atheists get saved. Pray that the agnostics get saved. Pray that the enemies of Christ get saved. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's still time. There's still time. And if you want to be saved, wherever you are, if you know that 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 you're not saved, you can be saved today. Well, preacher, how can I be saved? The scripture gives us the answer. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I'd like to lead you in a prayer right now. I'd like to lead you in a prayer right now to get saved. This is most serious, most serious. Men and women all over the world can be saved by praying this prayer. Repeat after me. And mean it. Be serious about it. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, that he went into the grave, and on the third day he arose from the dead. I want Jesus to be my Savior and my Lord. Forgive me of all my sins, Lord Jesus. Give me the gift of salvation. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, bless God. If you'll praise that prayer, hallelujah, you are saved. You are saved. Ladies and gentlemen, you are saved. We'll talk soon about what happens when a person is saved. All of your sins have been washed away, removed. God has no more record. Now you are you are set free that you can follow God, ladies and gentlemen. And I I I just thank God. Uh, I've been praying for a long time. God, what is the next step? What's the next step? What, what is the next step? A lot of people are confessing Jesus, but a lot of preachers don't know where to send them. The preachers say, "Well, come to my Bible study." People aren't coming out. Some are afraid to come out at night. Most Bible studies are at nighttime or noontime. And, and a lot of people just don't do it. And a lot of people just too, they, they've been practicing laziness all their life. They're too lazy. <laughs> Many don't want to do anything. They think this grace is free grace. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once you get saved, if you're 40 years old, that means you've been serving the devil for 40 years. You've got Amen. all kinds of devil on the inside yep. of you. Just mm. because you're saved, now you've got to get your mind renewed. You've got to get some goodness in you. You've got to start thinking good thoughts. You've got to cast down those vain imaginations. You've got to th stop thinking about adultery and smoking reefer and packing a cigar and, and drinking liquor and, 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 and having sex with somebody else's companion. You've got to 
Renew your mind in the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why these preachers are not helping people to renew their minds. But I also know that there are some stubborn people out there who have been deceived by so-called preachers of the gospel to think that once you confess Jesus, that's all you got to do, then keep on living a raggedy life. I'll contraire. Amen. So I said, Lord Amen. God, Lord God, Lord God, what is the next step? And the Lord has given me a next step. I want to share it with you. I want to share it with you. And, and you share it with others. It's free. It's free. God said start a, an international Bible study, an international Bible study where people from every nation can come on at the same time and hear the word of God and go through the Bible starting September 4th. Write this date down, September 4th, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, USA time. And I know that's like uh, 5 o'clock in the morning Kenya time. Or, uh, it's, or, or see, even about uh, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, Japanese time, but you can get the word of God. If you can't come online, these, these teachings will be recorded. We're going through the Bible from Genesis through Revelation. It's going to take us 18 months, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to break this Bible down into segments. We're going to spend 12 weeks in the, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Then we're going 12 weeks with the history of the Bible. Then we're going, that's from uh, uh, Joshua uh, to Esther, uh, Nehemiah, Esther. Then we're going to go 12 weeks with the books of poetry. Then 12 weeks with the major prophets. 12 weeks with the minor prophets. 12 weeks with the intertestamental period. Then we're going to take 12 weeks looking at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we're going to take 12 weeks studying the book of Acts. Then 12 weeks with the Pauline epistles. 12 weeks with the uh, uh, general epistles. Then 12 weeks with the book of Revelation. When we finish going through the Bible, uh, uh, book by book, we will cover an 18-month period, a year and a half period. But there will be no excuse, ladies and gentlemen. Once we finish, we'll start all over again. And every class will be recorded so that people can have the next step, the next step, and it will be free, ladies and gentlemen, F-R-E-E, -E, free, so that people can hear the word of God and grow in grace. God is serious. He wants you to be saved. Once you get saved, then you got to get delivered. You got to get that stuff. You got to get all that stuff that granny taught you, all the stuff your mama taught you. Your mama wasn't always right. Even your daddy was goofed up. I'm not talking about your daddy, but he was goofed up. He had some goofed up stuff that he taught and, 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 and granddaddy taught. And there are a lot of people still trying to live what granddaddy said, that said or mama said. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of that stuff we were taught, we were trained on, is so contrary to the word of God. But we're going to present the word of God as the Holy Ghost will give us, will give us direction. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, God, we thank you. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Father, for souls being saved all over the world. Thank you, Father. Now, Father, we just praise you. We praise you. Ladies and gentlemen, now the Bible study is only one step when we say, what is the next step? We haven't talked yet about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I just finished a series on uh, the Holy Ghost baptism. It's all on YouTube. And, and we'll review this in, the, in a short while. Ladies and gentlemen, God has provided everything we need to be successful. Praise God. Okay, is Jackie Fisher back on with us? Um, we missed you. I know you lost connection. And um, I don't see her on here, but I know she will be listening to the recording. Thank you, Jackie, for coming on. And uh, we'll have you read the scripture for us. Uh, again next week. Okay, I know you'll be home by that time and on your own using your own system. So we're going to take up again next week part 2 of is there hell? We're looking at Luke 16 verses 19 through 31. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to end the recording, but we will ask you to stay on for a few minutes and we'd like to entertain any of your thoughts and your questions any of your comments, and if you have a prayer need, we want to pray for you.